Well, I've got a couple of um, new tools to show you today. Uh, one that I've made, one from Banggood, and also I've got an upgrade to my angle grinder jig that I showed in my last video. So the first tool is this one here, which is a DTI stand, which I bought from Banggood. Um, just as it is, no magnetic base, and that's one of the beauties about um, buying this one. Very low cost. If you have a load of magnetic bases already, you can actually unscrew and screw one of these in. It's an 8mm thread, which is um, a universal fit. If you have some that are um, not the universal fit, it's very easy to make up an 8mm adapter to whatever is on your stand. Um, so this is a great tool to buy. Now I've been using this type all my life, um, which are quite good, but um, I find that quite cumbersome to use, especially in a um, very limited space. Sometimes they're awkward to um, adjust and mount properly, and sometimes you tighten one thing up and then something else comes loose. And I've always wondered why someone hasn't invented something much better. So when I had a look on um, Banggood and saw these and saw that they were a uh, one handle operation, I just had to have one and try one out. Now when I got it through the post and saw the quality and had a go with it, I went straight back online and bought another two. And now I intend to replace all my um, magnetic bases with this type of stand. So like I said, it's an 8mm thread with a hexagon on there so you can tighten it into the actual magnetic base nice and tight. I make up my own stands out of brass because um, I like them a bit smaller than the uh, cumbersome ones that you can buy. And this one's made out of a solid piece of brass with a 25mm rare earth magnet. I think it's about 10mm thick and it had a counter sink hole in it. So I bored that brass out um, to fit that one, pushed it in and obviously tapped for, I think it's about a 6mm screw if I remember rightly. And if you make these, make sure you put the magnet a little bit lower than the actual brass. Um, so it's just uh, but probably about five ten thou deeper than the face um, So when it goes onto the ways of the lathe or whatever you're putting it on it won't damage it in any way And you can put it in jaws uh, of a vice or even on the lathe and tighten that one up nice and secure so it's made of blackened steel, chrome steel and anodized aluminium, nice orange colour. Um, it looks like a PTFE uh, washer in between there on the actual swivel. The clock mount assembly is made of solid aluminium with a um, plastic knob here. It would have been better if it was steel, but I'm not worried about that because once a clock's set in it, it's set. Um, that is screwed into a steel swivel ball and I've checked that with a magnet it's definitely steel and I see on Banggood you can actually buy this end separately um, if you ever needed to change it so you have the through hole there for these types of clocks and they do a really nice one on Banggood at the moment with a nice yellow face in thousandths of an inch um, very low cost and good quality and I've got one of those coming and on the front here it has the dovetail fitting um, these clocks have a dovetail section on the back of them and they just slide into that um, dovetail slot like that and then just lock the knob on the side and when you use these types of clock, make sure you have this um, knob at the top here. This is the fine adjustment um, screw. And it's very handy if you're using clocks, um, say in tenths of a thou, or if you have a clock with very little movement. 
Now the real excellent thing about this clock, apart from the quality, is the actual design. It's one handle operation. This plastic handle here is a nice chunky handle as well. You can actually just loosen that and all the swivel joints of the um, DTI stand come into operation. And it's very smooth to operate and you can actually virtually set it in any position you like and then with relatively little movement of that actual handle here and very little force you can actually lock it rock solid and I never knew these DTI stands existed until a few weeks ago and when I tried it out felt how smooth it is and how positive it is um, I was totally amazed and you can see on this Chinese mini lathe, which is a very um, small gap in between the tailstock and the chuck, you can actually move this and actually do the concentricity or whatever you're going to do very easily. And there's the fine adjustment. And on this type of clock, I found um, the easiest method for me to actually mount um, the clock. You may have a different method, but I take the fine adjustment screw out and I replace it with a, it's a four millimeter thread. I've cut a brass um, screw down to length and that one screws in there. Keep the little um, adjustment screw safe. And then tighten that one right down. And that will lock the fine movement up. And then I've made a small brass bush which converts this one into that diameter so it can hold on to that one nicely. That one pushes in there like that and then the adjustment on the uh, end there locks that one in place. And that's the only way I could actually um, put my clock on without it actually clashing with the um, knobs on there. So that one's really just to lock um, the clock on there, but you can use that one for adjustment if you ever needed to. And then it's ready for using on the machine. So it's a really excellent stand and I totally recommend it in every way. It's very low cost and like I say, very well built, smooth to operate and very positive. And when you try one out, you actually won't believe it. So now I come to these tools here, which I've made out of um, a piece of mild steel. And I've um, put one of my stainless steel balls on the end there. And these are polishing sticks uh, for use on the lathe. And they're used to hold emery tape or wet or dry. They have a slot here in the front. You put the emery into that and then wind it round and you can hold this um, end here until you get the spindle going and insert it into the bore or the thread and then carry on polishing because the actual rotation of the um, chuck will hold that um, in position. You can actually put a bit of um, tape on there, but I never do that. I just insert it carefully, keeping my fingers away from the end of the component. And like I said, as soon as that um, goes into the bore, you can polish away with it to take out a thou or two, or even get a nice, a really nice um, polished finish. And it's really important when polishing bores or threads on the lathe to use one of these. You should never actually stick your fingers into the work or the components. 
I did hear a story um, several years ago where a man was actually polishing um, a thread on a laser with a spindle going and all of a sudden the thread caught his finger and actually wound his finger into that um, thread. He must have got um, some really nasty injuries from doing so and it must have been a terrible experience. So for an example on the Chinese mini lathe, I always um, remove the tailstock if I can and give myself more room. I remove any tools that are on the actual tool post because uh, when you withdraw your hand you can actually catch um, on those tools and cut yourself badly. And I wind my um, saddle back as far as I can. And then it's simply inserting the emery into that slot. You can actually um, pinch those slots down a bit um, to make them a bit tighter so it actually holds the emery tighter. And put it in that way and just wind it clockwise so it's nice and tight on the spindle of the polishing stick. And then just hold it carefully with one finger. And you might have to adjust the amount of emery on there. I've just torn off a piece there so it actually goes into that bore easily. And then you can start the lathe. And put it in the bore like that. And then polish safely. And you can see there that was completely safe polishing with no danger at all. And it's a really excellent tool to have and to use for polishing because you can actually polish the full length of the bore without the tendency of making the front oversize. And you can actually use it to take out a couple of thou if you want, especially on brass or aluminium. And you can actually use very fine wet and dry uh, to get absolute mirror finishes in there. And the reason I have two at the moment is because I use them for various different um, diameters. This one's smaller and obviously for smaller bores. And you can actually make um, really um, small diameter ones uh, for very tiny work. And I make these quickly and easily on this angle grinder jig which I showed in my um, other video for doing expanding mandrills um, this is a very thin one millimeter um, disc on here for cutting stainless steel um, I use it for all different types of steels uh, you can actually use them for even brass or aluminium and I've um, modified this um, tool now with this um, palette in which I've screwed this V block onto and then screwed it onto the actual um, base of the angle grinder stand so I put the steel V block on my um, bench drill, um, put it in a vise and carefully drilled through um, from the side with the small V um, for a core diameter for a 6mm thread and then I tapped that. Um, many people think that these V blocks are too hard to um, drill but every one that I've um, found so far has been quite soft. And then I bolted the V-block um, onto this 10mm um, thick steel plate from the underside and then that one's bolted onto the um, actual angle grinder stand um, in the actual slots. You can adjust the stand at the back here to get everything central and then lock it all in position so that whenever a piece of bar, no matter what diameter it is, it goes into that V-block it will be dead centre to that actual um, disc. So it's much quicker than using a vise and um, once it's set you can leave it set and like I say everything will be dead centre. 
and I did have this clamp already for this V block I think it might be a homemade one and um, it did have a small thread stud through there but I've drilled it out and tapped it for 8mm um, to make it a bit more solid and then the bar is simply um, put into that V block and line it up you can have it um, sticking out quite a long way and obviously I've done the slot in this one already lock that one solid and then you can actually um, bring that disc down through that bar and cut the slots when it comes through the underside here the underside um, slot will be a bit shorter obviously than the top one I found that you can actually undo the clamp turn it over pull the um, disc down into the partway slot lock up with this uh, clamp again and then you can finish off cutting uh, down through and it'll be equal length to the one that on the top or that was on the top so not only is it brilliant for actually making the expanding mandrels that i showed um, in my last video it's excellent for making all types of tools with thin slots in if you want to get them dead straight um, and it made these um, brilliantly and just one tip before I go, if you do make one of these up with the V-block or the vice to cut these down, um, always start off with the full diameter. If you're going to make um, a smaller one, put the large diameter in here first and do the cut. Lock it up and do the cut. And from the underside, turn it, well, turn it over and do the other side. Finish it off and then turn it down to whatever diameter you want and obviously that makes the um, cutting much easier and there's no chance of it actually flexing if you start it off um, like with a small diameter and just one thing before I go I live in the UK and I ordered these um, probably two or three days ago and they came in that short period of time so I just presume that they've got um, a warehouse more locally and the reason I'm saying that is that you can actually have one of these um, really quickly if you order one in the UK I don't know what it's like in America um, and I think there's many other tools now uh, which are um, delivered obviously from a local depot so on um, several items which I've had now, I haven't had to wait um, like a couple of weeks for things to arrive.